Hey everybody, welcome back to my series on the Danish Gambit. Starting to feel like Jonathan Schrantz or Eric Rosen here doing a, a, a complete series on one particular Gambit line, but bottom line is, this is the level that I'm studying this to now because I really, really want to demolish opponents you know, in the intermediate range. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for my own enjoyment. I'm sharing it with you in the hope that um, it'll inspire you as well. So, you know, if this is too much detail, then you know, feel free to skip over it. It's fine. Yeah, pick a pick a couple of lines um, that work for you. You don't have to study it in in massive massive depth. But this is what I'm wanting to do right now. Okay, so the Danish gambit. So we're starting with the center game accepted. We push another pawn. Black takes the pawn. We ignore this Pac-Man of a pawn. And we throw our bishop out to c4, so we really are gambiting pawns in return for early development. Now, if he grabs the next pawn, this is a full Danish. This is where we are up to right now. You'll very, very likely get this scenario quite a lot. And we've looked at a few things already. And we've, we've, I've done my first two videos were on d6, which is not the most common approach. Uh, the most common approach is this. Bishop b4 check. This is called the Copenhagen defense, and this is what we're going to be focusing on. All right, now, um, let's go, because this is exciting. So th there are a few responses, right? Uh, one I've mentioned before is King F1, and that's perfectly good. King F1 is good, but it scores pretty well. Knight to C3 is, is the most common response that you'll probably find. Um, the problem with Knight to C3 is that the whole point of gambiting this pawn and putting our bishop there was to target that pawn on g7. And for me, if black's bishop just sits there, we've blocked black's bishop, we've, but we've also blocked our own bishop. Okay, So to me, that's not the best approach. But there are some very, very sexy lines. I mean, I'm talking filth. I'm talking pure filth. <laughs> it's just, you know, stomach churning, right? With with this next move, knight to d2. And this is what we're going to be focusing on now. Um, we're going to look at knight to f6 coming up next, all right? So this is, there, there are a few directions we can go, but if, the, if you get the Copenhagen with bishop b4 check, you block with the knight to d2. Um, and this is, this is flexible, okay? Now, it, um, it seems as though we're offering up a pawn here, and we are. All right, so the knight, this, is, this, is, this video will focus on this knight coming out to f6, okay? Now there are two approaches that you can take that I will offer you, and they're both decent, all right? Now the first one is e5, all right? And in general, you'll quite often want to do this. Now the engine doesn't like this, this has got black doing quite well now at 1.9, at 2, right? Um, we're kicking the knight, but we're inviting the knight to come in here with two attackers on this pinned knight. What are we going to do? If, you know, knight takes, we can't take back with the queen, we lose a queen, right? So, if you look at black's position now, he can't go there or there because the queen takes him. Uh, he can only go here, really. If he goes there, he gets taken by the bishop, and he can't go there and he can't go there. And going back is not really an option. So he will always go to e4 if you do this. And now the engine says we are balanced. Okay, very interesting. So um, when he does this, right, you can sack your bishop on f7. All right, and now there are two ways that black can go. Okay, this is the best move in chess. Love it a bit. Okay, so if the king takes the bishop, then you have queen b3 check, you are hitting the king, and you're hitting this bishop here, and after you get that bishop, you'll be hitting that knight. Okay, so um, let's say king moves away, you simply grab the bishop, and you may trade off the knights, and let's evaluate the situation at the end of this, right? You've got three minor pieces, black has three minor pieces, Th these will probably get traded. Um, you have five pawns, black has six, but aside from this knight, black has no development and his king's been forced to move. Okay, so the computer says 1.3 in white's favour. Happy days. All right, now, 
There's an alternative response here. Okay, so let's just rewind. Okay, Copenhagen, we block with the knight. Black puts out his knight, makes perfect sense. He wants to castle his king, get his king safe, very important. Okay, particularly in gambit lines when your opponent has got um, rapid development and could launch an attack before you've got your stuff together, right? While your soldiers are still pu pulling their trousers on. Okay, so with this first approach, we push the pawn, hit the knight. The knight is definitely going to come into e4, which is actually a mistake according to the evaluation line, apparently. Um, so it's, it's, now, it's now got black plus one. Okay, now when we grab this, okay, so we've looked at king takes, which is absolutely fine for white. Now, what if the king moves away to f8? And then there's a particular move order that you have to know. Okay, now, if you think about it, this knight is still pinned. If this bishop is under attack, okay, so we can't capture that knight. So, this particular thing that you have to do, right? First, we have to get rid of this pin on this knight so that we can grab that guy, right? So, we do that by putting our dark square bishop on a3, right? Bishop takes a3. You then grab the knight, okay? And then if the king grabs the bishop, you come up here with your queen and we're gonna win this bishop back, okay? So um, let's say king moves and you just grab the bishop, okay? And now we've got two minor pieces. Black also has two minor pieces. He's got six pawns, we've got five. So we're actually only one pawn behind, but Again, the king has been forced to move. Again, he's got no development at all. Um, he's also in check. We're going to develop our knight. We're going to castle. We're probably going to go on and do quite well. The computer, with perfect play, has white at plus five here. So it's not a massive, massive advantage. So let's rewind. Because I said I had two approaches for you after this move, knight to f6. Okay, so you, you'll be probably okay by pushing the pawn. And in general... Anytime this knight comes out in the Danish, pushing the pawn is a very typical response. Now, but let's look at option number two, please. Right, option number two is knight to f3. And you're like, hang on, hunty. Have you lost your mind? You're giving away a perfectly good pawn and we're gonna end up with the same problem with this attack. Having lost a pawn, yeah, but wait, okay? So, He'll take the pawn, right? Of course he's going to take the pawn. And the evaluation bar has now jumped up to 1.8 in White's favour, 1.7 now. Hmm, I wonder why. Okay, well, let's see who can guess. So option one is to castle, okay? Um, and obviously it looks like we're giving away a knight. So he'll take the knight and he's attacking the rook. Okay, but wait for it, okay? First, rookie one check. This is very important, okay? We have to give check on the black king. Okay, and the queen can't block here. Here, that's a previous move. Queen can't block because they lose a queen. Bishop can't get out, nothing else can block. It's either a case of, um, I mean, if knight goes there, we just capture the knight and it's got the same problem. He's gonna lose two, two pieces. Right, he's either got to move his king to f8, which is bad, or retreat the bishop to block and give back the knight. So he'll bring the, normally bring the bishop back to, to block, and then we grab the knight. And now look at the situation. The computer says it's all white all the way. Right, this is absolutely fantastic. Okay, um, but we've got four pawns and three minor pieces. Black's got seven pawns and three minor pieces, right? Yeah, and okay, we're castled, we are now completely developed, and black just isn't. But to have white plus 5.8, what's going on here? Well, let me show you what's going on here. Okay, so we've just captured the bishop, and black goes ahead and castles, okay? And now, see if you can guess the next move. You likely can't because it's just super clever. And I think this is actually quite a recent trap that's only been um, figured out this year, okay? The next move, the stunning move from white is to sack the exchange with rook takes the bishop on e7. And now you can see the awesome power. 
of the bishop pair, right? Look at these guys, right? We set these up right at the beginning of the game. We've forgotten all about them. They've just been sitting there, you know, with their hymn books. Queen takes rook, ofs. And now, very important with rook e1. And there are two things that black can do here, right? The first one is sexy, okay? So queen here, let's say, queen comes out, get, gets away from the rook, for example. We pop our queen on c3, okay? And the evaluation set bar says the lovely words m2. Mate in two, there's nothing you can do, right? Because now we are looking down at here, right? This pawn cannot advance to block because it's pinned by this bishop. Okay, so what, what can black do, right? He can put his queen here and we just take the queen. That's it. And put his queen here, we just take the queen. And on the next move, it's going to be check, mate, whatever you do, right? Now, is that sexy enough for you? Or do you want it sexier? Shall we up the sexy level? Okay. So we've moved on rook here to e1 and attack of the queen, right? What if the queen runs away like the measly coward she is to d8? Well, that's when we open up a whole bottle of sex and pour it all over the board. Because knight to g5, knight, yeah, that's all right. Okay, I get it. It's fine. We're advancing a knight towards the king, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you're, let's say your opponent plays knight to c6. It doesn't matter an awful lot what they do at this point because they are toast. We capture on f7. Sacrifice. It's no sacrifice. Rook takes. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, you could, you could win back the exchange here. That's absolutely fine. But we're not interested in that. We are dripping in sexy, sexy chashnish. Okay. Um... And the next move, queen d5. And we are threatening queen to capture on there, okay? Followed by king in the corner, queen to capture on here, defended by bishop number two, right? So, what can black do? Reinforce the rook with the queen. Queen can't go here because our other rook just snaps her off, okay? So queen comes here. And now, Puzzle time. This is basically white to play and win in two moves. Okay, pause if you wish. If you don't wish, here's what happens. Queen takes rook, badder boon, right? Now, there's really nothing much to be done here. If the king goes in the corner, queen takes queen's mate, okay? Queen takes queen, and the final move, the money shot. Rook e8 is check and mate, my son, because this queen is pinned by bishop number one. How sexy is that, right? That's absolutely glorious. Okay, so let us rewind, okay? We're on approach number two, okay? Let's, we'll start over, okay? Copenhagen defense. We block with a knight on d2, right? The third most common approach. He brings out his knight, okay, which is what we're looking at in this video. Uh, and instead of e4, we are looking at moves with knight to f3, okay? Now he's always going to take that, okay? But he, right, let's say, what if he doesn't? If he doesn't take that, okay, what if he just castles, okay? Listen, this is the last thing that we need to look at today. Okay, if black castles out of this and resists the offered pawn, you just castle. Um, let's say he pushes a pawn, he's getting ready to develop his bishop and come and attack us, right? Now, this is a funny looking move. Why are we moving our knight to here? Well, I'll show you why. What we are doing is we are preventing the bishop from coming to this square, okay? So, bishop comes out, pins our knight, and black's looking like yeah, you know, I'm in control. I'm, I'm all right here. I've got three pieces developed. White's got four pieces developed. You know, my king is safe. And I'm up, what, two pawns. So black's feeling this is all right. Now you push a3. 
and the bishop ain't got nowhere to go because these two squares are now guarded by the knight. Right, so bishop comes back here, knight takes, pawn takes. All right, and now queen b3, right? It's an old favorite, very, very standard move in the Danish. And we've got this nice battery pointing straight at the king. And now this rook can't step out onto the semi-open file because bishop just comes in and wins, wins the rook, okay? And the pin on the knight is, um, is broken now, so our knight is now mobile. And the computer says this is kind of, you know, uh, balance. It's, it's got it plus four, well, minus four in black's favor. But this is, again, a reasonable approach. And, you know, castles is something that you might see. But I think, in general, from this position, um, no, from this position, nine times out of ten, you're going to see black just grab the pawn, okay? And then we've seen what happens, okay? So this is really cool. So I've um, I've saved this uh, analysis on chess.com, so I'm going to put the the link. If you want to come and browse my PGN as it is, you can come and do that. I'll put that in the description. I will also paste the PGN for all of this into the video description as well. So knock yourselves out, guys. If you want to go ahead and make yourself a Lee Chess study, go ahead. If you want to make a chessable move trainer, you can do that as well. You know, take it, use it. I mean, this is not none of my own invention. This is just stuff that I've scoured off YouTube videos and, and a, a little bit of uh, research on Lee Chess Explorer as well. But knock yourself out. Hope you are starting to get the Danish juice is flowing because I'll tell you what, I really, really am. I, I just, I can't wait to unroll some of these traps in the wild. Uh, it's a very exciting time. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. And I'll see you very soon.